please hit subscribe. Problem 3. At the surface of the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity has the value g equals 9.8 meters per second squared. The constant of universal gravitation is given by g equals 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Question 1. The radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to the third kilometers. Find the mass of the Earth using the values of G and capital G. Let us review the following concepts. First is the idea of the acceleration due to gravity. Let us recall that the lowercase g is tightly related to the concept of weight. Weight is defined as the force experienced by an object due to the pull of the Earth's gravity. And from Newton's second law, we know that that force must be equal to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to that gravitational force. And that acceleration due to that gravitational force is what we denote as g. The generalization of the amount of attractive force between two objects due to their gravity or masses is given by this equation. It says that the force, the attractive force that is experienced by the objects is proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their distance, the distance between them that is. And the constant of proportionality is called the gravitational constant g. And in this problem, we have the masses to be the mass of the earth and the mass of the object on the surface of the earth and the distance between them would be the distance from the center of the earth to that of the surface of the earth where the object is. First let us write what is given in the problem, that is the radius of the earth is given to be 6.4 times 10 to the third kilometers. However, we want to be working in base units, so we obtain this for the radius r. Then let us recall that the lowercase m would denote mass of the Earth, f sub g would denote the gravitational force between the Earth and the object on its surface, and m sub o denotes the mass of the object which is on the surface of the Earth. We know from the previous slide that this gravitational force can be expressed as the weight or the universal law of gravitation. And from this equation, we can see that the mass of the object can be cancelled from both sides. And we obtain this. We can rearrange this to obtain this. Let us now plug in the values for g, uppercase g, and r from the problem. Let us recall that we have converted everything into SI base units, and that means that the final result here would also be in SI base units. In this case, that is the SI base unit for mass, which is kilograms, so now we do not have to worry about the units. Now we plug in the values given in the problem for G, 9.8, for R, this, for uppercase G, this. Now, because the problem provides choices and the choices are very much different from, it, from each other in terms of scale and values, we can do some approximation to simplify the computation. Here we replaced this value with this value, and this value was factored out to be this, and we further make another simplification considering that 6.4 is roughly equal to 6.7.
so we can cancel one here and here so we have this and we also combine the powers of 10 so we know that the scale is this much now we further make another simplification from here to this and we obtain this and now this is quite easy and based on the choices the value nearest to this is this so this will be our answer question 2 an object can escape from the gravitational attraction of a planet if the object has a large enough speed the minimum value of this speed is called the escape speed find the escape speed of the earth the escape speed is the speed when the kinetic energy of the object is equal to its potential energy in this problem the kinetic energy is related to, to its speed and its potential energy is its gravitational potential energy we now compute for the escape speed v here the kinetic energy is given by this m sub o is the mass of the object here is the potential energy the gravitational potential energy is related to the distance from the center of the earth to the surface of the earth where the object is and that is given by r which we know from problem 3 1 then we do some manipulations to obtain this and finally this then we substitute the values of g and r from the problem that is the substitution here and again because we are using base as i units we can be sure that the final unit of this calculation will be in base SI units, which is this. Because the values in the choices are very different from each other, we can further do some simplifications in the values here so that they are easier to compute. 9.8 is estimated as 10 and 6.4 as 6. This is from this here, taken out of the square root symbol. Now this value is just 120, the square root of which is 2, square root of 30. I know that 30 is between two perfect squares, 25 and 36. So I can make this inequality here. Also, I know that 10 to the third will be in the succeeding computations so I decided to group it with the units now this value is just 10 and this is 12 so my V is between those two and I just take one more 10 or rather power of 10 and put it here so the unit is now this and now I have 1.0 is less than the digits for V is less than 1.2 and the value in the choices that fit that fits this is this 1.1 times 10 to the fourth meters per second so this is our answer question three the mass of jupiter is about 320 times larger than the earth and the radius of jupiter is about 11 times larger than the earth what is the ratio of the escape speed from Jupiter to that of the Earth? Let us first write down what was given in the problem. Here, m sub j denotes the mass of Jupiter, r sub j the radius of Jupiter. The problem states that the mass of Jupiter is 320 times the mass of Earth, and that the radius of Jupiter is 11 times that of the Earth. And from problem 3, 2, we know that the escape speed from the Earth is this. And this is easily extended to Jupiter. Here, V sub J is the escape speed from Jupiter. And therefore, it will be like this. Here, G sub J is the acceleration due to gravity in Jupiter. And this quantity has already been defined here. Now we are looking for the ratio of this escape speed to this escape speed. 
when we carry out the division, we get this, and we get this when we substitute this value for r sub j here. And finally, we obtain this. Now we just need to compute the ratio of g sub j, which is the acceleration due to gravity in Jupiter, to that of the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. From problem 3.1, this is how we computed the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So in Jupiter, it would be like this. Getting this ratio, that will be this. Now, the problem gives us the ratio here in the numerator, which is 320. And in the denominator, it was given to be 11. And so, this ratio is given by this, which is now this. And the 11 here cancels with one of the 11s here. We get this. Again, because the, because the choices are far apart from each other, we can make a simpler calculation. Instead of 320, let's do 330 so that, so that it's divisible by 11. And when we do that, we see that we just need the square root of 30, which falls between the square root of 25 and 36. And therefore, this ratio falls between 5 and 6. In the choices, that would be 5.4. Question 4. A satellite moves in a circular orbit around the Earth. If the satellite's orbital period is equal to the Earth's rotational period, what is the radius of the satellite's orbit? Here we have to recall the idea of centripetal force, F sub c. We recall that the force, the centripetal force experienced by, the, by an object in circular motion is given by this. Here, m sub o is the mass of the object. v sub o is the speed of circular motion, that is the linear speed. And r sub o is the orbital radius. And we also know that in the current problem, that centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force, which we also know to be equal this. Here, m sub o again is the mass of the object in orbit, and r sub o, the radius from the center of the Earth, or rather the orbital radius of that object in circular motion. In the problem, we are told that the object is in uniform circular motion around the Earth, and the object is a satellite, so instead of m sub o, we use m sub s for the mass of the satellite, and for the orbit of the satellite, the orbital period, we call it t sub o, and also it, it was stated that this is equal to the rotational period of the Earth, which is of course 24 hours. Here, this is the radius of the orbit of the satellite. V sub O is the speed, the linear speed of the orbiting satellite. And G sub O is the acceleration due to gravity at the orbit, at the orbital radius. So if we have a circular motion around the Earth, then the centripetal force, which is given by this, equals the gravitational force, which is given by this. And now we can cancel the mass and we obtain this. We also know that the linear speed, or v sub o, can be obtained by getting the circumference over the period of orbit. So this is the circumference of the orbit, and this is the period of the orbit. All of these quantities are given in the problem. And so we just need to simplify this and solve for r sub o. We note here that this quantity is g sub o, and this can be computed from the law of universal gravitation, and that is just the same method we used in problem 3.1.
here we use the final equation, the previous slide, to solve for r sub o. We have this expression for r sub o cubed. And now we just replace these, val these variables with the values given in the problem. And again, the numbers in the choices are sufficiently far apart, so we can use some simplification. So here, the, the constant of universal gravitation is simplified to 7 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the Earth is as given in problem 3.1. The period of the Earth is 24 hours times 3,600 seconds per hour. And 2 pi is approximated as 6. And then we try to make this a little bit cleaner. We group together the tens in here, the powers of 10. And 36 here is cancelled with the 30, with one of the 36s here. And that's what we mean by this, cancelling the exponent here. Now we have the 7 here, the 6 here, 24 squared from here. And then next is we combine the orders of 10, orders of magnitude. We get this. Now we notice that because we have a cube here, we'd like to have a perfect cube here as well, if it's possible. So here we combine these two to get this perfect cube. And this one is instead of using 24 squared, we approximate it to 25 squared because that's easier. So we get this. Then we round this up to 630 so that we get 63 here and the 10 goes here. So we have 10 to the 18th now. Now we again try to make a perfect cube. So this one retains, is retained. And then this one, the closest perfect cube is 64, which is four cubed. And seven closest to that is eight, which is two cubed. Now we can get the cube root of this whole expression. So we get r sub o in here. Here we get this is 2. Cube root of this is 4. Cube root of this is 6. So 2 times 4 times 6 is 48. And the cube root of this is this, 10 to the 6th. And in the choices, the number closest to this is this. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!